Welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George, and today we're going to talk about why humans cannot circumvent natural law to gain a free will. Okay, before we go into it, I just want to describe a bit what we mean when we say that we have a free will and why that's not really possible, and then why this topic is so important to our world. Um, basically, the term free will means that we human beings would be free to choose anything we wanted, like all our choices, all our decisions, the feelings we feel, the acts we do, are completely up to us, you know, completely independent of anything that's not in our control. And, um, you know, and the simple way to understand, there's two simple ways to understand why that that's simply impossible, that basically we're the products of, of you know, our past and our genetics. But the, most, the two simple ways are, one, the idea that nothing happens that, that's uncaused, that there's a cause for everything. Nothing happens at random. So that means that, like, for example, we, have, we make a decision, there's a cause for that decision. And there's a cause for that cause, right? Because everything has to have a cause. And there's a cause for that cause. See, that's the thing. So, like, then you have this causal chain regressing back into the past, you know. And, and the key thing to remember is that the cause will always precede the decision, the, uh, the, the event, whatever it causes. So it's always going back in time. And if you go back, you know, in time, cause by cause by cause, you're actually going back moment by moment by moment. And this cause just doesn't end. It, it spans back before our, our, we were born, certainly, before the planet was created. Um, you know, at the, at, the, at the Big Bang, it's anybody's guess, you know. <laughs> but you would, you would think that something happened before that. And so that's one way to understand why, you know, this notion that we have a free will is impossible. And the second way is just the idea that we we have a part of our mind which we refer to as our unconscious that is the storehouse of all of our memories. You know, all the words that we use when we talk, all the concepts that we consider when we're making a decision, everything, all the data is stored there. And the other part of the unconscious is that um, the processing of that da data, whenever we make a decision, when, whenever we decide to do something, uh, choose something over something else, all that processing is going on at the level of the unconscious. We, we, we're usually not aware of it. We, we may be aware of like, you know, small aspect of that, like that, well, you know, I have a choice between this and this, but, but the, uh, the basic consideration of all the data in our mind, in our unconscious, and the, that what we're going to weigh, how we're going to weigh these things, especially with our emotions impinging upon our decisions and you know, other things that we can't control, that, that demonstrates very clearly that if our, our decisions, if, if, if the, the data upon which we're basing our acts, our decisions, and the processing of that data all happens on, at an unconscious level, obviously um, this, the decisions we make, you know, the, the result of processing that data can't be as a, as a result of a free will, you know, because in order to have a free will, you'd have to have a conscious will. Um, the unconscious, by definition, is something we're not aware of. So naturally, if we're not aware of it, we can't be in control of it. Okay, and, um, and the reason this show is like so important is because like we, our whole civilization, our whole society, our in relations to ourself and each other, it's all um, based on this premise, this, this premise that, that we have a free will, this, this, this illusion, and, and it creates such havoc. Uh, in our personal lives and, and throughout the world, you know, when, when we're with someone and they do something we perceive as wrong, you know, we'll tend to blame them. We'll tend to kind of like, you know, feel maybe that they should be punished, that they just, you know, it, it creates negative feelings, you know, 
um, among each other. And, and, and like certainly when we do things wrong, a lot of times we feel the pain of guilt. And so um, now naturally I have to always say this, that like overcoming or transcending the illusion of free will would not mean that we abandon morality. Because, you know, my understanding, because, you know, I've worked with this causal will rather than free will perspective for decades now, but um, my understanding is that regardless of whether fate or God um, or I, you know, I mean, which is impossible, but regardless of who makes me do or what makes me do what I do, um, there, there tend to be consequences for, for what, what, what I do, what we do. You know, when I do something that's good, God, nature, fate tends to reward me. When I do something that's wrong, God, nature, fate tends to punish me. So as long as you keep that perspective, you know, and maintain the morality, then you can um, see the wisdom and the utility of overcoming the illusion of free will so that we could see ourselves um, as innocent, so we could treat ourselves better. A um, good way to explain this is like, for example, with a toddler, a young child, when they do something wrong, we don't ascribe a free will to them so that we don't blame them. We, we say to ourselves, well, you know, they couldn't have done any better. They didn't know any better. Uh, they, you know. And so, you know, by, by transcending the illusion of free will, we can apply that same compassionate and intelligent understanding toward ourselves and each other. Okay. Um, and, you know, we just would create a brand new world through that. I mean, that, it was just like, it would change everything, I think, uh, in a very wonderful way. All right, so, so now our, our theme for today is, you know, why humans cannot circumvent natural law to gain a free will. And the idea behind that is some philosophers claim that, well, they'll concede that everything has a cause. They'll concede that the nature is causal. And um, at some point I'll get into the, the notion of randomness, but let's stay with the causality for right now. Um, so they'll concede that nature, particles, matter, everything has a cause, but somehow, you know, they'll say, but we human beings are different than everything else. And they'll say it's because we're different that we have a free will, but when you when you explore that contention, you'll understand that it, it's wrong on, on two counts. Um, firstly, you know, we, we, by all appearances, we are matter, we are physical, you know, and we're bound by the physical laws because of that. And even, even if we were to claim that our decisions were not quote-unquote physical, that they were spiritual, you know, we always have to understand that any decision we make is made at a moment in time. You know, you can't escape that. Physical, you know, whether the decision is physical or spiritual, it's made at a precise moment in time. And so, because it's made in time, that's what makes it subject to the physical laws. Um, one way to explain this is that um, we no longer understand time as a separate independent entity. It's, it's best understood as space-time. You know, this was one of the results of relativity, that, um, that time cannot exist outside of space. So anyway, so if, if the universe is made out of space-time, um, you know, particles, energy, matter, mass energy interacting in space-time, and you have a spiritual decision, a spiritual thought, whatever you want it, occurring in time, you know, it's, it's completely determined by the causal laws. Um, this, the second way this contention that, that we human beings are special and we can circumvent this kind of natural law to, um, to have a free will, um, the reason that's wrong is because, um, well, think about it. They're saying that, like, well, you know, causality doesn't apply to us. We can make a decision of our own free will. But what does that mean? You know, that, that means what? That our decision is made without a cause? Think about it, because if, if the decision is made without a cause, 
then it's ran random. Um, you know, and, and you know, by my thinking, um, oh, and then like you know, if, if if a decision is random, certainly we can't take credit for it because by definition, random means without order, without purpose. You know, literally, you know, its most its strongest meaning is that um, something is uncaused. You know, um, <coughs> excuse me, but. Um, but that's one way to understand it. That's one way to understand. If, if, you know, if a philosopher wants to make the contention that we are special and we can somehow transcend this causal law, then they'd have to explain, well, what, we make a decision and there's no reason for it? You know, there's no cause for that decision? Um, if that's the case, then certainly the decision could not be the result of our will, let alone free will. You know, because basically the the um, the idea, excuse me, idea behind that argument is that um, we we make a decision, and that there is no causal past to that that decision. That decision stands on its own. But think about it. You know, like let's take the the issue of decisions as relative to morality. You know, we like to morality is a very important um, topic in this question of human will because like. To understand that um, that we don't have a free will is to understand that, essentially, most fundamentally, we're not morally responsible. We might want to blame or hold accountable the universe for whatever we do, but since we're agents or instruments of, of the past, since our decisions are not up to us, we, we wouldn't be morally responsible. So, so the idea is like, you know, from that perspective, you know, if we were to make a quote unquote freely willed thought and um and it has no causal past, that would mean they would have no moral reason for it. And so certainly, you know, from that understanding you could see how the that that concept of a free will is just incoherent. You know, um just it just doesn't make doesn't make sense. Okay. Um so yeah, um, and again, the, the 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 contention, the notion that somehow we can circumvent natural law, it just there's no no evidence of that. Um, you know, all our science is causal. Um, all right, I got to get into this in terms of quantum mechanics and um, and the physical nature of, of reality. Um, Back in 1927, I believe, uh, Werner Heisenberg published a paper um, that showed that at the quantum level, particle behavior is um, uncertain. In other words, like in classical mechanics and the mechanics of Newton that, that you know, was what physicists used to make predictions before quantum mechanics, you could like simultaneously measure the position and momentum of an object, you know, to arbitrary precision, to make a, um, a valid prediction, to predict its, its future state. Okay, um, so this, and um, there's different ways of explaining that. I'd rather not get into it because it gets a little complicated, but, but you know, the uncertainty principle just stated a, a reality that, like, at the subatomic level, for example, you have, um, you have one, let's say you fire a photon at another particle in order to measure its position and momentum. Okay, the problem is the act of firing that particle at the target particle to be measured interferes with the trajectory, with the momentum of the particle. So that, you know, because of that, you can no longer simultaneously have a measurement of the particle's position and momentum. Now, at the, at the macro level, you know, like if we were to measure like the momentum position of a grapefruit or something, the difference between the measuring particle like a photon and the um, the grapefruit is so great that there's you know that the the photon wouldn't for all practical practical purposes um, interfere with that. So you know because of that, people some physicists have claimed that this Heisenberg uncertainty principle 
demonstrates that um, matter at its most fundamental level is random. And um, again, that's, um, there's no logic behind that. Um, I recently wrote a paper um, describing that in a way I think that uh, will be salient. I, I really shouldn't talk about it because it hasn't been published yet, but the idea is that um, the, the term randomness is just like incoherent. You know, randomness means that something happens without a cause. And if you try to imagine anything happening without a cause, you know, what would that mean? You know, so anyway, so like, so the, the science all, all points to the um, very strong conclusion that everything is caused, that everything has a causal past, and because of that, um, free will is impossible because like, if I make a decision right now, and there's a cause for that decision, and there's a cause for that cause, and a cause for that cause, Again, we see how um, that chain will go back before I was born, before the, the planet was created. Okay, one of the, one of the claims that, um, well, one of the premises, I guess, that leads to claims like that we human beings can somehow circumvent natural law is that, like, you know, there's, there's got to be free will because... Um, it's because like life would have no meaning if there were not free will. You know, they, they, they start with that premise. It's like they say, well, if we're instruments of God, if we're not the authors of our acts, if we're just the actors and we don't even get the, the opportunity to interpret our roles, if that's the case, then what's the point? What's the point about anything? And, you know, you have to admit that it, that has a certain kind of a, um, a cogency to it, you know. But, you know, that's kind of like asking, what's the point? I mean, we're here for like 80, 100 years, and then we die. So, so like, you know, presumably, I mean, I, I tend to believe in an afterlife because, like, I, it, it, you know, I, I basically try to ha have beliefs that will increase happiness, diminish um, unhappiness. So, like, you know, existing seems like a more pleasant belief than not existing for whatever reason. But... Um, <laughs> But the idea is that, um, fine, we, 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 um, we may not have a free will, and, um, but we still experience life. You know, um, we experience, I mean, what I'm saying right now, what we do, we, the emotions are real. You know, uh, meaning, meaning in life has to do to a great extent with emotion. We're, hedon we're hedonic creatures. We seek pleasure, we avoid pain. And, and meaning is valuable because it is such a pleasant sensation, a pleasant aspect of, of, um, of our lives. You know, to have meaning in things, that we value that. It, it, it makes us feel good. So, um, so, yeah, the idea is that we can, you know, life can have um, all the meaning it really needs, um, just like that we're here and we're experiencing life, we're experiencing reality, without our having to, um, you know, need to, to falsely believe that we are, you know, the authors of our thoughts. Um, and, you know, in, in a certain sense, let's say we, we attribute um, our thoughts to like a, a deity, a god. Let's say God is responsible for our thoughts. I mean, because we could also say it scientifically that it's the causal past or our unconscious. But if we attribute it to God, we could say to ourselves, well, you know, who would I want making the decisions regardless of, of no, no, about what I do? I mean, um, myself with my limited experience and knowledge um, or, you know, a God that, that presumably knows everything or, you know. Now, all right, <laughs> at this point, it gets a bit confusing because, like, for example, with me, I mean, this is with anyone. If we had a free will, who among us would choose to not feel happy all the time, to not feel blissful all the time? Who among us, if we had a free will, would choose to feel negative feelings? Who among us would choose to do things that are wrong, to make mistakes? So, so from that perspective, you know, like if we, you know, if we had a free will based on the hedonic 
creatures that we are, and again, that wasn't our decision, that's the way we were made, um, we would be in paradise. You know, and it, it's because we don't have a free will that, that we're not. Now, that's not to say that um, we can't eventually um, live within a paradise, you know, understanding fully that our wills are causal and, and not ours. But, um, but again, you, you still can have, I think, great meaning in life um, and, uh, and understand that, that free will is, in fact, an illusion. Okay. Um, now, all right. Now, I, th I, think, I think we've covered this. I think we've covered this in, in sufficient detail. The idea is that um, even if we would see ourselves as completely non-material, if, let's say we, we were to see ourselves as spiritual beings, that just the fact that our decisions have a point in time renders them um, subject to the law of ca causality. Um, the state of the universe at the moment pri prior to our decision would have completely determined that decision. And the state of the universe before that would have completely determined the state of the universe before the decision. So it, it's all about causality in that sense. Okay. Um, I've got a bit more time. And what I want to do now, I've got some, um, some kind of like miscellaneous considerations just about free will. And these are kind of fun because like they're it in quote unquote random order and um, they're pretty cool. Like it just puts everything in perspective. Okay, so the first one I want to um, explore is that the success and failure of everything we do has been predetermined. I mean, think about this. When, when, we, um, when we're working on something and we want it to succeed, if we had a free will, you know, we could make it succeed in many, many cases. You know, if it's something like we're trying to, let's say, play a piece on an instrument or, or write something or, you know, do a sport, hit a baseball, whatever, whatever we're doing, you know, if we had a free will, we could choose to kind of do things in a certain way. And it's the idea that, like, on a certain level, we understand that we don't have a free will because that's why we hope and that's why we pray that what we, what we do will work Will, will be successful. If we had a free will, we wouldn't have to hope. We wouldn't have to pray. And so, um, and that's the thing. So, like, um, everything we do, you know, we're obviously fated to succeed at some tasks, to fail at others. And, but it's, it's like, it's all predetermined. Now, you got to ask yourself, well, why? Why in the world would fate um, cause us to fail at anything? Because who likes to fail? Because also, you know, fate kind of like creates, creates us as, as beings who find displeasure from failure. But nonetheless, fate, you know, <laughs> compels us to, to, um, to fail sometimes and, and feel that, that sting of failure or whatever. It doesn't make sense. On that's kind of like asking um, why there's pain in the universe, you know? Because like when you think about it, without pain, the universe would be completely blissful. But so you know, the answer then is like, I, who knows? Who knows why it's like that? But it absolutely has to be like that because because we don't have a free will. But and the other thing is like, for example, like you ever you ever like see these like sports stars? Somebody who does something really great is given an honor you know when they're giving a speech very very often they are thankful you know they thank god they they feel grateful that for for the opportunity to um to do what they've done you know there's a lot of humility there and i think a lot of times these really great people they understand they understand that hey you know it was a matter of luck of of um of their being kind of chosen to do something great by fate, and they recognize that. You know, it's not that they haven't done the hard work involved, because certainly, um, you know, hard work is often involved in, in doing something that succeeds. But they, I think, understand that even that, that they, they've been given the will to do that hard work where others just don't have that same passion, that same drive. You know, and it's something that they, they understand to be a gift. Okay. Um, all right. Something that's very, very cool is like just the idea that like 
All right, we're, we, we now from science and finally like exploring it in enough detail, you know, fully enough, we now understand that free will is an illusion. Okay, but, or at least many of us do, 30% um, of the world apparently. Um, but, but it's just like an amazing irony that, um, that we've actually been predetermined to get that the nature of our human will wrong. In other words, for, for century after century after century, we've been fated to have this illusion. Um, it's not the first time that nature has like um, deceived us in that way. Like for example, for how long did we think that the, the sun traveled around the earth or that the earth was the center of the universe or uh, you know, when we look out at a, at a straight road, we kind of like think we see water. There's a lot of mirages or a lot of illusions in life. And, you know, it's all faded. So it's just like very, very curious and interesting that, uh, that we've actually been faded to believe that we're the authors of our thoughts when, when the exact opposite is the case. And now, for whatever reason, fate has determined, well, it's time for us to really understand the true nature of our human will. And presumably by that, um, hopefully we'll be fated to create a much better world as a result. Okay, well, um, I think that's all I have time for today. I've ho I hope you've enjoyed the, the show. And, you know, in the future, we're going to continue exploring the various ways that we can understand why our human wills are, are not free and how this can help... Um, us create a better world and also enhance our personal lives. Okay, thanks for watching.